Hey everybody, good morning. Ah, so want to thank everybody for the donations, continued support, and everything. Uh, last couple days I've seen an uptick of uh, donations. Uh, I'm not sure if that coincides with anything, but I just want to make sure I thank you guys. Uh, I did do a couple like background releases of the installer as I worked through some of the bugs that were in the installer itself. Um, I do have another version that's coming probably in the next day or so, which also has some input mapper, uh, actual application updates. Um, one of the things that I worked on was the plugin loading system. Um, previously, it was just kind of going through the plugins folder and loading all of the DLLs, even if they aren't directly plugins for input mapper. Uh, it was also loading like sub assemblies and all that stuff. And it was causing some issue where it was like lo loading some older files or files out of order, stuff like that. So I've tweaked that a little bit. So now the uh, initial DLL search and the plugin loading only loads actual plugins. Um, in addition to that, it will also check the plugin to see what version of the plugin interface it uses. And if it's a version, if, if it is a version that's different than the one that Input Mapper is currently using, uh, meaning maybe you have like a older plugin or a newer plugin or your input mapper version's old or something like that. Um, it'll give a warning in the log, but it'll try to run it anyways. Um, and the reason why I'm doing this is because at some point, uh, the plugins are really going to become more detached from input mapper, allowing people to uh, download them and distribute them individually as they see fit. So I wanted to make sure that all the versioning and all that stuff, uh, there was some sort of a, a fallback in place to let people know if they were mixed matching versions. Um, uh, beyond that, uh, there were a couple feature requests uh, as far as like some stick tuning and um, kind of like calibration stuff that uh, was asked for. And this has prompted me to add a couple new uh, functionality. Uh, items to input mapper um, and that's going to be the inclusion of a uh, we already have like a mapping system where you take one channel pass it through some modifiers and map it to a destination channel um, now I'm going to do the same thing but more of like a, a top-down approach like uh, it's meant for more channels and it's going to be a state uh, modifier and what that is is you can modify the input state and those modifiers will, you know, have access to be able to manip manipulate multiple channels at the same time, since they are looking at the entire state and not just the channel value. And the what the reason why this is needed is a lot of these more complex, um, like dead zones and all that stuff, especially like the radial dead zone, require the plugin to know the value of both of the intersecting axes. So being able to pass an actual full uh, state will mean you have access to all the channels, including both of the intersecting axes that you can set up. So uh, not only that, but other stuff like the top dead center calibration that I used to have, where um, when you take a controller and you push it straight forward, uh, you used to be able to calibrate whether or not that is also both mechanically and physically straight. Matting that functionality in as well. Uh, so that's about it. Um, I'm hoping to have this version out in a day or two. I'm uh, just kind of polishing a couple things. Um, the full actual inclusion, especially the UI for the state modifiers, might not be ready yet. I'm still working on the framework. Uh, but the rest of it, I do want to do an intermediate release just to make sure it doesn't cause any instability. That's about it, guys. Thank you again, and I'll see you next week.